Good morning, everybody. What are you doing, Jen? You making pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, <laughs> pizza at supper time. When pizza's in e eggs, you can have pizza anytime. I'm making pizza eggs. Pizza eggs. But this time, we're going to put them in the tortillas and add some hot sauce. Because we only have three eggs, so we're trying to make this, like, go a little bit further. Yeah. I can't wait. Butter in the pan. <laughs> She's Jen's drinking her coffee out of my mug. Ooh. All the while, I'm over here making Mickey Mouse toast. Do you see Mickey in there? Look at that. It's a Festivus miracle. This is the best looking pizza eggs that I've actually made. I've showed you guys a couple versions, and this one for sure looks the best. It's like a thin pizza. I think that kind of makes a difference. So, we're going to put them in these tortillas. Somebody asked if I heat up my tortillas. I don't usually. I let the food kind of like warm it up. I let the food sit in there and like kind of get it nice and like pliable but uh today we had to heat it up because they were ripping yeah they were like sticking together what the heck i put hot sauce on my pizza eggs Ooh, did you see that one piece of egg just like bleh, <laughs> fall over yeah it looks like it's gonna be so good i'm excited yeah what did you think oh no you're not oh. supposed to show me until my mustache is done oh no now you guys know what it looks like undone oh no i feel like they already know it was good what your mustache being undone no all the food all the food delicious Good. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Happy Sunday, everybody. Today is one of those days where you have like a lot of housework to do. It's like the only day that we can do it. So we're like, yes, let's do housework today. Indeed, we're going to like do laundry and like clean up like what you do on a Sunday, right? Well, because I was editing for like- Oh yeah, because what time is it now? It's like going on 2.30, so yeah, I was the video's- editing. For like six hours. Yeah, because the, the uh, VIP experience was a very long day at Universal and we film a lot of footage and then we have to edit it all down and then, uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of time. I wanted to show you guys something that we got at Universal yesterday. That's It's not anything like fantastic or like a big souvenir or anything, but it was something that we have never gotten before and I wanted to share it with you. It is the Universal Orlando Writer's Guide, which is amazing. This is for writer safety and guests with disabilities. So what this does is it tells you all of the height requirements for every ride at Universal, it tells you a little description of each ride, and it tells you what kind of access it has. So like if you need to transfer out of your wheelchair, if you could bring your guide dog onto it, but you can't bring guide dogs onto any ride. Well, you can bring them onto the Hogwarts Express, but most of the other rides have a little kennel for the guide dog and they sit inside of a kennel while you ride the ride. It tells you if there's like fog effects or if there's like seizure warnings or flashing lights. My favorite symbol in this entire book is the one for, uh, <laughs> for nausea. You gotta see this one. There it is, or it's for motion sickness. Look at that thing. It's a little like stick figure throwing up off a boat. That's my favorite. So here's another one that I found yesterday that I thought was kind of funny. It's the water fountain sign in Transformers. But doesn't it like sort of a little bit look like he's drinking out of a bidet? Right? Yeah, a little uh, bit. I don't know, I thought that was funny. I need to go through this book and find a ride that guests wearing casts are not allowed to ride. Casts. Why? Casts. This one's pretty interesting for the Hulk coaster. This one means that guests must secure their prosthetic limbs before riding. If it has a red background, it means that they must be removed before riding. That's pretty interesting. This list is pretty interesting. It's all the rides that can accommodate a wheelchair where you don't have to get out of it. And then these are the rides that you have to transfer out of your wheelchair to ride. One thing I totally forgot about was the fact that there's a super moon outside right now. You know why it's a super moon? This is a full moon in its closest state to Earth in 69 years. Oh wait, was that this morning? No, it's tomorrow morning at 6.30. Sure? Yeah, Monday morning, 6.30. Yeah, that's... Today's Sunday. Okay, right, okay. I just <laughs> wanna make sure we didn't miss it. It's pretty darn big out there. We're gonna go outside and look at it in just a second. It's behind a couple of clouds, so it's real eerie looking, but it is exciting that there is a super moon happening. So it's closest to Earth that it's been in 69 years, and it's the closest that it will be for 18 more years. 19 more years? 18 more years, one of those two. Will it be closer in 18 years? I don't know. Does it's it a good be question. Every year? Uh, no, because Why? then it wouldn't be the closest it's ever been in 69 years. So then it gets closer every year? Not every year. Wait, how- 69 years ago, it was closer than it was last year. But it happens every 18 years? No. 
I don't know what the, the I don't know what the like the the period between them is. But well, it's got to be like a pattern, right? Because it's like math. You'd think so. So it must happen every 18 years. But there's a lot of stuff affecting the moon, the sun, other planets, gravity, Halley's comet. Whoa. Lots of stuff happening out there in our solar system. What makes it is that like what makes it closer to us? Its orbit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and also our tilt oh. and our orbit. That sort of stuff. Okay. You know, those things. Let's go look at it. All right, we're not going to get a very good view of it cuz it's behind the trees, but I will keep coming out and checking to see if we can see it throughout the night. So while I'm doing a little bit of research about the supermoon because I need to know more, I am going to be eating some brain food. And my public subs is a chicken tenders pub sub. So delicious. If you guys come here on vacation and you're looking for a good supermarket to go to, Publix all the way. Fantastic. They're clean. They're nice. They are well priced. Not the cheapest you can get. You can still get like Publix brand stuff and it's still cheap, but uh, I don't know. I just like it better. It's a nicer experience. And you can get public subs there, and those are delish. Not yes, just delish. And here's mine. I got a an Italian. I got a boar's head Italian. I do think there's definitely a difference between the Publix brand meat and the boar's head meat, like as far as the uh, subs go. I mean, I guess obviously there's a difference, but like I think there's a pretty big difference. So I like the boar's head meat, and this is so good. And I got some extra sub sauce on the side. It's like an oil and vinegar and like herb mix. It's so delicious, but yum. So I wanted to ask you guys something because last night I ordered new shoes because my shoes are at the end of their life, which is terrible because uh, I go through shoes once a year. Shouldn't have to go through shoes once a year, but I do because we do a lot of walking. And I wanted to ask you guys, because you guys with like an iPhone or people that like use apps all the time, I know that the iPhone tracks how much I walk during the day, but I want to know how much I've walked since last October when I bought the shoes that I currently have so that I can see like how long did they last? Like how many miles did I put on those shoes without having to go through day by day and like write it out and add it up? I figured there should be an app that does that, right? Did I just give away a million dollar idea? Darn it! Okay, so I did a little bit of research on it. The moon always comes as close as it is tonight to the earth. Does that make sense? So it's in an orbit and it's always in that orbit, but it just so happens that we are able to see a full moon when it is at its closest point in the orbit. And that's what makes it the super moon that we haven't seen for 69 years, 68 years, I think is the correct thing. But so it is, it's, it's still like a, an amazing coincidence that this is happening, but it's not anything that's like, What's going on? Why is it getting so close to the earth? What? Why? Who? What? When? Where? We know why, when, and where. Here's what I don't get. What's that? Is this going to happen again in another 68 years? No, it happens in 17 years. Or 19 years. What did I say? One if of those. The, but if the moon is like a, has its own cycle. The moon was made of spare ribs. And it orbits around the earth at also another cycle that's like pretty routine, right? Like pretty. Yeah. Okay. So then why is the next full moon in 17 years, but the last one was 68 years ago. So it's not like the, the full super moon. I mean, because this, so the moon orbits in uh, an ellipse, right? An oval shape. Right. And it, there are two points at which one, the distance is the shortest between the earth and the moon. And the other one where the distance is the furthest between the earth and the moon. Those are both called the apogees, okay. right? So we're having a full moon at the apogee. Imagine it like a clock. If you were looking down on the earth with the moon circling around it being the, the numbers on a clock. Right now, the moon is gonna be at, at midnight, like right there. But like every other super moon will be at like, like 11.59, 11.58, you know, like or 11.45, something like that. Okay. Does that make sense? So it's not quite the closest that it could possibly be. So close, but it's not like, it's it's like this far away rather than this far away. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? No. Why not? I don't know. Basically, the whole reason that the, the news and scientists are making a big deal about this is because they want people to get interested in science. Oh yeah. They're like, go look up and look at how amazing the moon is. Look at it, it's huge. It's huge. Look at it. How could you not be interested in that? <laughs> and so that's why we're like, super moon, you know? Science. Science. 
Later in the evening, just coming out to see the moon, trying not to move around a lot. I haven't zoomed in so far. Okay, I'm doing it, I think, like slightly. Oh, sorry. Oh, all right, hold on, here we go again. There's a super moon. I'm holding my breath, it's not working. Do you guys wanna see how far zoomed in I am? Yeah. It stinks that we didn't get to see the super moon one more time tonight, but it's cool. Like, I like it. I like seeing the moon gigantic. And if you have a really good zoom on your camera, you can see a lot of detail. Or if you have like a telescope, you can see a lot of detail in the moon, which is awesome. Fun fact, the side of the moon that you're seeing and when you're looking at it, that is always the side of the moon that you will see. One side is always facing the earth and one side is always facing away. Pretty interesting. So with that, uh, I'm going to see you guys today. See you guys today, and now it's time to pay the price. So I woke up this morning at 6.20 to be able to see the super moon, and it was cloudy. It's 7 o'clock now, but I wanted to show you guys the clouds. Because what the heck? I wasn't able to see the moon this morning when it was supposed to be its largest. 